welcome to another incredible episode of the Action Podcast. Today, we are going to be reviewing, we saw it last night, we're going to be reviewing Bad Boys, Ride or Die, so you, to tell you whether or not you should check it out this weekend. We also will review Furiosa, we've been holding on that one, um, and you'll understand why after our amazing review on it. Uh, uh, we also saw The Dead Don't Hurt, uh, I was looking forward to seeing that one, and then hitman also came out today so I'll, I'll i've seen about half of it so i'll just let you know whether you should check it out or not that's on netflix now sure uh, and then pete saw ezra and finally saw ezra and i also bag saw of lies bag of lies which is a yeah. horror movie that i think we should all be interested in and and hopefully by the next podcast i'm going to try and check out garfield and in the uh, uh in, in the violent in in violent of nature or something like that. Um I heard good things about that movie. Um I gotta check that one out. There's no huge demand for the Garfield movie, so you know, don't worry about it. <laughs> just don't worry about I'm it. I'm just kinda curious. And that's been the case for I think twenty years now. Every time Garfield something has never translated that, well. It's never hit. It's never popped with yeah. audiences ever. But it's ever. got yeah, it's got Chris Pratt and Samuel Jackson. I just, you know, a pause of Fury fame. So I yeah. want to do pause of Fury fame. Exactly. Yeah. And Chris Pratt is right off of Super Mario Brothers, which people like crushed him for. Yeah. I mean, he did really great. So that's kind of why I want to give, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt of. Yeah. Garfield. We're in such a right now. We're totally talking about Garfield, which we haven't even seen. Yet. But anyways, Pete, let's get, I think I want to start on this one. Um, bad boys. Ride or die, if if that's okay with you, can I start on this one? What are you doing? Sure, I was backing up so you can start uh, talking. No, oh, thank you. Uh, I want to start with this one, Pete, because go ahead. I feel like I am the epitome of the audience of of bad boys, and You're a bad boy. I am a bad boy for life, and and so i love the original when it came out in 1995 i'm gonna tell you a little history of the bad boys this is what i'm gonna do right now but uh when the original one came out i remember watching it and i'm i, I love the style of it and i just remember thinking i really like what this director is doing it's different it's fresh and lo and behold this new director was michael bay and he would then go on to do the rock and armageddon good and and um you know he, yeah. he he was a commercial di director um in transformers of course uh but he was a commercial director and he, he's a very visual director however you can definitely make that argument that he's not the best story director like steven spielberg is very good at directing and has a good visual sense mm -hmm. um, i i would ar also argue he's not necessarily great with cgi i think he sometimes overdoes cgi uh michael bay is great with practical effects that's actually and it's kind of crazy that Michael Bay is more practical than Steven Spielberg. Like, it's insane when I even say that in in, in, in my mouth. But so I remember watching the first one and I loved it because it was just yeah. a real raw, action packed kind of kind of a cop thriller, you know. And but the cop. First, and the first one was Saw, but it didn't have a huge budget. Um, but it did very well, and I saw it in the theaters. I remember it. You know, let me stop you because the first one it didn't have a big budget, but you know. It game looked banker. like it had a really big budget. I mean, yeah, I think that's his brilliance in a way as a director is that he's able to take things and really make them look original and significant, but then yeah. also under a normal budget. Yeah, like he. I mean, that first one was incredible, and and, and he would also kind of levitate stars. So Will Smith was not a star yet. I mean, he was on. Fresh Prince of Bel Air, but that this was his first real movie, I believe. I mean, I think he did like another movie, but this was like his first. He's the star. This is his movie type thing, and then he would do in Independence Day right after this. I believe that's the timeline. He might have done Independence Day first. Don't quote me on that. I should have done research, anyways. And then Martin Martin Lawrence had his show Martin, but he was not like a movie star yet. This was like his first film. And he would go on to do many more films. And so that was also kind of his thing, too, is he would kind of launch other stars, kind of young and upcoming stars, and kind of take in the next hemisphere. He did that with kind of Ben Affleck. He got a, he got a young Ben Affleck after Good Will Hunting, but he still was not really an action star yet. And Ben Affleck kind of went into that. And then also, like, Josh Hardnett 
he really hadn't done much before that. So, right. Uh, and the second one had a bigger budget. I can make an argument that the second one's my favorite, but I also thought it was too long. Like there was just too many chase sequences. Like it was just like one after the other. Like, all right, I don't need another 15 minute chase sequence. Like there's one in the middle. That's awesome. <laughs> where it's the one on the freeway where the cars are going all over the place. Yeah. Um, very bad Max Furiosa. Yeah, exactly. But then it's just like, there's still so much more of the movie to get to. And it just, it kind of interrupts it in a way. And so the second one's not a perfect film, but in a lot of ways, I liked it more than the first one. The, the, the third one then comes out 30 years later ish. And I absolutely love what they did. Michael Bay was no longer directing. Uh, he handed the reins off to, uh, two upcoming directors and I thought they did a fantastic job and the story was solid. Um, really, they really encapsulated a lot of what Michael Bay had already built and really helped continue this story. And it was a good story. Uh, now this one now comes along and I'm, I, I'm not going to lie. I was a little worried going into this because the third 100% one, percent worried. The, the, the third one had the benefit of time and then your, you know, the characters and all that, you know, they, they, they had their different lives and then, you know, what's this, uh, uh, Joe Pagliano dies in that one. Like they really packed a lot of punch into that third one. And I love the third one. Uh, so I was really worried about this one and see what they were going to do with it. But I'll tell you what, man, I was not just thoroughly surprised, but I can make an argument. That this might be my favorite one because I think this one did the best with the comedy. I feel like Martin Lawrence, I feel like in the third one, Martin Lawrence was a little rusty and he was like, just trying to get, cause he really hadn't done much acting. He felt too sticky. You know what yeah. I mean? He felt a little rusty. And in this one, I felt right. like he was kind of back to Martin Lawrence from the two thousands. And I thought his humor and his character, he was more on top of, and he was really funny in this one. Um, because I, I I loved old Martin Lawrence and I and I feel like again I feel like he was to himself again I feel like the first one he was almost a little too um like he didn't have his confidence yet sure and this one I feel like he had his confidence and then this is Will Smith's return to the big screen after the slap and again is he gonna hold any of this on is he just gonna be himself and I thought I thought he did a good job too their rapport was great in this one and might might have even been the best. And I think, I, I, I think I thought it was a really good acting job by Will Smith. He, he definitely has different emotions throughout this movie, and I think he he brought the heat on this one, and it, it just reminded everybody that he is a genuine star. If he's put in the right role and in the right movie and in the right setting, this guy is a star. Both these guys are. We we knew this. Just don't make a comment about his wife. Apparently, like we we <laughs> yeah we know Will Smith is incredible and we know yeah but he had a couple bad movies though too that doesn't help but we know he's incredible in this role specifically we know this they've they've already made three movies called the force yeah Uh, if will smith was shitty then there's no way they would have made a fourth movie now 100 percent. this movie is like this is yet another bad boys movie that i'm going to continue to watch over and over and over again. I mean, oh, for so sure. just, just like the first three, the chemistry between the two is amazing. And and let's get this right. These two together, whether they're outdated or whether there was a slap or whether, you know, it doesn't matter the circumstances. If you can just like kind of eliminate the noise, Martin Lawrence and Will Smith together are two peas in a pod. Like these two guys together are absolutely phenomenal. Um, you have to love this movie, and I don't know. I haven't done the research. Forgive me, but the, there's two directors on this. There's Adil El Arbi, and then Bilal Fala. I don't know what they've done. The, but Bad Boys like, was their first movie, I believe. The, the the last one. Okay, because they've really, really kind of like they understand the Bad Boys universe. A hundred percent. They're great. A fantastic way. Like they've literally taken something and this is the fourth of of a series and they have really been respectful and um knowledgeable and they've really hit on all of the great points of the first three movies and executed them 
perfectly. And it's almost seamless. Like what they've done versus the original regime has done. Like they've done a really good job of not only establishing themselves as premier directors, but they've also been very respectful of the original series when it started up. Now, I will say there's always, you know, there's always like things that you are going to expect from these movies. And there's always a great excuse for a slow motion stand up straight, a hundred wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... shot. You know what I mean? Like you have to, you always have to throw one of those in there. And I'm so happy that they threw one of those in there. Um, you get Reba singing bad boys. Ah, uh, that was great. That was a great was moment. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Um, you also get like this pretty intense view at the very beginning. And I'm not going to, this is, it's not going to spoil anything, but you get a really intense view on the in between between life and death. You yeah. get a really incredible um, interpretation of what happens to you when you're in between life and death um, that I thought was actually quite brilliant. That sort of set the tone for yeah. this movie. And then, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they still fuck with the Marine's son, um, no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> Even yeah. This that dude, was that was the, just where I was just it. like, and I loved it too, Pete. You talked about it in another movie, but they kind of made it because they, they set the they set it up well because he's he playing video games in this movie. This kid, he, he's playing video games on the couch the whole time, basically this movie. But he's also you know, the you know he's yeah you know he's also a marine too, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden it becomes basically like a real life video game, and then they're watching it on screen and they're just like rooting. Oh. For yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's like, go, oh, like, turn it up. Like, Dude, this, this was, this was, that was like, a brilliant, that was a brilliant this thing. This movie's going to get zero recognition from anybody. This is one of my favorite movies. We're in June right now. We're halfway through the year. This is one of my favorite movies um, that I've seen so far. Oh, yeah. This is probably top five for sure. I liked it, it probably better than Ghostbusters. I liked it. Um, I mean, I like there was heart. Or... There was heart in this movie. There was ridiculousness, like the Martin Lawrence character, without giving it away. Like he goes on this approach, and it, he goes through his own journey through this thing. And it's the beauty of the writing of of this film, and, yeah, and the was... way that the writing was performed by these two amazingly um, charismatic actors um was absolutely phenomenal this was a really well done movie and yeah. if every movie was done in this genre like or not this genre but um in well, this method you would have so many great films today like this it, was a really great film absolutely and, and what i loved about this film too this was like a value pack film because i felt like th this was again like a throwback to the original bad boys lethal weapon you know what I mean? Like this is a good old this is a good old fashioned cop film, which we don't get a ton of these days because, you know, obviously it's a police... throwaway. Like I don't see a lot of ads no. for this film. The police? No, there's That's plenty of ads everywhere. What are you talking about? Um, and, it, it, we don't get a ton of great cop movies now, especially because the cops aren't necessarily like in great light. So this is like a good old fashioned nineties, two thousand, eighties even cop film, right? But then in the middle of it, it, it kind of turns like into the fugitive, and you're just like holy crap like what like yes. what's gonna happen like, how are you gonna get away you know film perfect well done paul well yeah because in the middle of this i'm like i love what i love what this movie's doing although what would have really made this movie a 10 out of 10 oh, is Tom Lee ever, Jones was leading the uh yeah if the woman if the woman whose husband died because of the son of will smith she's and the daughter son, she's the daughter she's the daughter so yeah. Sounds complicated to the audience, but if that woman who was pursuing the son of Will Smith um, was like a Tommy Lee Jones character, because she's so minimal in this movie, and I really wish... What are you talking about? She's not minimal at all. No, she's minimal in terms That's of... Like, what the, the, again, screens, also the brilliance of the writing, they made... Uh, she's, in, in terms of the screen time, if you would have given oh, her a little bit time, more... Yeah. If you would have given her a little bit more and having her be involved a little bit more versus... A lot of the chaos that's happening in this film, you could have, 
if you added 10 more minutes to this movie, I would not have argued, oh, this is 10 minutes too long, right? Just this movie was really well done, and it was a perfect length, but you could have added 10 more minutes of this movie to make her the Tommy Lee Jones character from The Fugitive, and I think that that would have made this an absolute 10 out of 10. Uh, I, I mean... I because there was no, there was nothing between her and the kid. If you were a first time watcher of this movie, you had no context to the, you know, the the wife who's now pursuing and wants to kill. No, no, it's the daughter of the son. of Joey Pants. She's the daughter yes. of Joey Pants, and then right, and then. And then Will Will Smith is like he's the hey, one hey, pursuing. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna save. Like I'm gonna I'm doing this for your dad. And she's like, you got my dad killed, and that created kind of the beef between them. And then she's going after Will Smith's yes. son. Yes. But, However, I, she I, know, I thought the, they did it pretty well. She was at the very beginning, and then she kind of showed up at the end in a in helicopter middle, in the middle, and then yeah. No, but all I'm saying <laughs> is, if they would have made her more of a Tommy Lee Jones character, where she was a little bit more involved, then. I would have added 10 more minutes of screen time to this film Maybe. to incorporate that storyline because that would have really propelled it over the edge, in Maybe. my opinion. Maybe. Maybe. Who cares about my opinion? Right. Uh, I would have to see what is written. I mean, I wouldn't write it just to write it. One of the best movies you'll ever see. I, I think this is great. I think for this genre, like, like I said, this might be my favorite Bad Boys film. I think I'm that's so a nervous. Where I saw it too. Oh I like, yeah, I was worried. I don't know what what we're gonna see. And I'm glad they brought just... back the son. I really like the son and his he's character. So yeah, he's he's hard to figure out in a good way. Uh, Dude, this movie crushed. This movie crushed. Will Smith crushed. Martin Lawrence crushed. You know, I'm not watching so... the last one and being like, if they make another movie, if the son's in, I'm in. Because I think I, I I really liked the son was a great villain in the last one. Yep. And. and yeah, so really guys, with the, our they, whole point is go check this out. Uh, this might be, besides Wolverine and Deadpool, this might be the movie of the summer. It, this is amazing. I mean, I think Wolverine and Deadpool, I think, is going to be <laughs> the number one movie of the year. But, sure. well, uh, there's so many, there's so much news coming out of that movie. It's insane. But I think this might be number two of the summer. I'm, I'm trying to think of it. I liked it more than Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Um, I like Dune it more two part of this year because Dune two is my all time favorite. Yeah, I mean, I think Dune two. I like this more than Dune two because it's easier to like appetite. Dune two is a better film. This is a better movie. This is a this is the action this, pack. This is a pop, yeah, this is a popcorn movie. Funny. Yeah. Well acted, well directed. Well, I mean, this movie is so and and it's thoughtful. This movie is very thoughtful. It takes yeah. something that happened in the past. And it incorporates something from the future. Like, I mean, Reba singing Bad Boys was brilliant. That, that sold me on this movie, to be honest. Like, up yeah. until that point, I was like, I'm down with this movie. But then Reba started singing Bad Boys. And I'm like, I'm so good with this movie. This but it was is part of the movie. It was part of the joke, though, too. You know what I mean? Like, that's why it was so exactly. brilliant. If she but just it, it, it would have made sense. But it was, like, totally incorporated in the movie. He's wearing the shirt. Like just name one Reba song, you know. Like it was, it was a great. That was a great scene too. It, but that, but that you don't see that that level of um, thought into a very specific scene. You don't see that nowadays a lot. And so when you see it, and it's attached to this movie that's absolutely incredible, you go see this movie immediately. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. All right, next. This is this is where the uh, the good times end. Uh, this, next, we have Furiosa. Uh, Mad Max saga. This is the sequ- up. this is the prequel to, of course, uh, yep. Mad Max Fury Road, which got nominated and won several Oscars. Um, I finally was able to make it through the original Mad Max. Um, Pete, do you want do you want to start on this one? I'll start with this one because you know you have a very select group of people, and I, and when I say select, I don't mean like a minor amount of people. I'm talking about a, a a large group of people that really love this Mad Max uh, group, just in in the same vein of um, like the Fast and the Furious. You have a specific group of people that that love high CGI and um, visual effects and action-packed 
This movie, however, um, Furiosa is a prequel. And so what they've done, and, and again, I appreciate everything that goes into these Mad Max movies, and it's a lot of effort and money. Is it necessary? We can argue that on a different day. However, this is a prequel, so there's an expectation that there's not going to be a ton of these sort of action-packed sequences, and it's going to be more about story. Um, and and it's true. There's not a ton of, like, high-octane, over-the-top sort of action vehicle sequences, even though you do get those. Um, but there's uh, you do get a sense of why they told the Mad Max story in the first place like you get it um and people are gonna love this film if you love these types of movies this it's movie high, was highly ranked it's it's highly ranked and this movie was not for me um but that doesn't mean that you're not going to go out and enjoy it um i, I just didn't understand the need for this film um well i, I didn't think that I mean, the main character, Furiosa, I mean, the main girl that we all wanted to see doesn't even come in until, like, I don't know, 60% into the movie. And then even when she's there, she's not even talking. Um, and then I, I really wasn't impressed with Hemsworth's character at all, even though he's brilliant and I love him and he's gorgeous. Um, but I, I, think I don't know. They never People were going to love this film, but I, it just wasn't for me. But that doesn't mean anything. I, I don't disagree with anything you're saying. I think, one, if you like the first one, I feel like you'll like the second one, and, and, and the audiences have kind of already spoken about that. Sure. Um, I think this is an action-packed kind of film. <laughs> uh, more story. There is more story to it. Um, you know, so you brought up a good point with Hemsworth, and I think that, to me, I think was the real, the biggest weakness is he, not his performance because I like I liked his performance. His performance was kind of fun, like almost Jason Momoa ish, like in Fast and Furious, where it's just like I'm good with this tone because this movie it would be just unbearable it's, if it wasn't a lighter tone. But there is no he hadn't I don't I didn't understand what he what why he was doing what he did. No, exactly. And if his if his character was more Dune based where it was more serious and it wasn't a kind of a joke, I would have accepted his character and been okay with his character a hundred percent. But because there was like this, there was just this levity to his character where it was almost a joke at times, if not throughout the entire film. Like, I, well, I, 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 I think it's irrelevant. They, they, they it's irrelevant because we just don't know what, we don't know his purpose though. That I think that's the whole point. It, it really didn't matter about the tone. Yeah, are you a part of this group or are you trying to take over that group? Oh, why? Why are you like why did you, you do doing? everything? And it, why are you taking all these people hostage? Like I, I don't understand. But because the other part too, he says at one point he's like, if you behave, I'll behave. And then he doesn't behave first. And it's like he well, never behaves. Then it's like, then why did you do that? And then but why did you even say that if you had no intention of ever behaving? I, again, but we don't know why he's not behaving. Like we never just understand his motivation and I hope they're not setting up like a prequel to the prequel now. And then we're going to go even back further to figure out why I hope him not. was not a great character in this film. Like this that's is not a, that's not a good excuse though. I mean, Wars, no writing. Like, Star like, that's, Wars, like this is the Star Wars problem. Like, we have to keep going back and further and further and further, hoping to justify why we did what we did in this film over here. Like, just just stop. Yeah, this movie I and think is going to really attract a lot of really amazing fans, and they're going to really enjoy this film. I'm not a part of that world, um, but I can appreciate exactly what it was um, that they were trying to accomplish. Yeah, that's fair. With a prequel, All right, let's move, let's move on. I don't want to spend any more time on that. Uh, cool. Next, we have the dead don't hurt. And I was super looking forward to this. This is Viggo Mortensen. He wrote and directed this. And he actually didn't intend to star in this, but the, his main actor bounced out. And so he ended up being in this. Do we know the main actor's name? I, I don't know who he originally tried to cast, but um, it didn't say. He just says he wasn't trying to be the star. Um, so this is a movie that kind of takes place during the Civil War and also kind of like about 
the frontier. And there's a lot to like about this movie. Uh, I think I really liked the female lead. I thought she was fantastic. Um, I thought her character was great. Um, I wish there was a little bit more score. I'm a big score guy, especially with Westerns. I feel like score for Westerns is key. Again, like I look at Tombstone, Young Guns, like those are Dance with Wolves even. Um, I felt like this could have really been levitated with a great score. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of goodness in this film. I don't think this movie was perfect by any stretch. But I feel like if you like Westerns, you'll like this movie. But I don't feel... Of, I don't feel like Deegan was a director. I thought he did some things very well. Yeah. Uh, I liked the cinematography. I liked... Um, I thought this was just a little too slow paced. There's this time where mm -hmm. I'm just like, Okay, hey, let's like let's let's move the story a little bit, you know, like, right. Um, and he's amazing. So yeah, I'm I'm happy that he's getting into directing, and I can imagine two three films from now, it being something that is absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, ultimately, I I think this movie is worth seeing. I want to see it again for sure. Um, I don't think this is the greatest Western ever made, but I don't think it's a bad Western. I think it's a solid Western. Um, I'd put it up there with like that Natalie Portman one and like Forsaken with Kiefer Sutherland. It's like one of those oh, middle, okay. like those middle ground Westerns that are solid. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jane, Jane's got a gun. I think was, was the Natalie Portman one. Like, so right. I just felt like it needed that kick-ass fight scene. And I don't feel like it really had that. I think that's what it was missing. Right. Like open range was kind of like that, right? Like where it's, it was like this solid movie. And then all of a sudden yeah. at the end, you're just like, all right, let's go. Let's battle down. And, and open range was so good. Yeah. But that's what this movie, like, I, but remember there's like that scene where, where Kevin Costner just blows the guy through the door. Like it needed something yeah. like, like visceral. And, and I, I feel like that's what this movie was missing a little bit. It uh, needed to dot the eye. Yeah. Like the villain yeah. was, was solid. Um, I did I, the I didn't really like like the last kind of battle. I just I was just like whatever. I can't wait to see it because I'm 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 really curious. I love westerns like you, even yeah. though I love it's good. Westerns. Like I said, it's 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 good. It's not great. I love Vigo. So I love Vigo too. Vigo's uh, uh, there's a lot to like about this movie. It's just not perfect. I think they just need to ratchet it up. Like we always talk right. about this, you know, even in writing. Like if if you're reading it and you don't have a visceral reaction, ratchet it up. Ratchet it up. and I felt like this. This script need another pass to ratchet right. things up and make you feel, you know, whatever it is in each scene, and I think that would have it would have taken to another level. So, never, uh, yeah, I I love a Carpathian who does a, a movie. <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right, next we have he's not Vigo the Carpathian. No, but that's Vigo oh. the Carpathian from Ghostbusters. He does kind of look like him though. But uh, yeah. All right, Oops. next we have. Uh, Hitman. This is on Netflix now. This is Richard Linklater. And if, for those not familiar with Rich, Richard Linklater, I'm going to tell you as I'm stalling here. Um, but let me tell you about Richard. He's amazing. Paul, take it away. <laughs> well, he's done a lot of your your, your favorite films. He did um, uh, Boyhood. Um, he did... Oh, okay. I don't know if you heard about Boyhood. Uh, have you heard of that movie or no? Boyhood, that's the Isn't one that it, yeah. actually took place like over 12 years or something like that. Yeah, with Ethan Hawke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Of course. Um, Everyone's heard he, he did that movie, Everybody Wants Some. Um, and then like he had a big famous, oh, Bad News Bears. That was a, that was a new one. Oh, he did School yeah. of Rock. I love School of Rock. Oh, School of Rock's great. Um, before some, oh, Days and Confused. That's what he's known for. Oh, okay. Days and Confused was revolutionary. Yeah, 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 and then everybody. All right, so we got this of... amazing director. Okay, go on. Yeah, yeah. So he directed this one. This stars, of course, the the new sensational Glenn Powell, who you know has been just on top of the world. Uh, he's rushing right now, just absolutely he's crushing. I mean, he's 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 the it guy right now, and so to have that face. And then also stars Adria uh, Arreola. Uh, Arreola. I'll let her name up in a minute. As perfectly pronounced. Well yeah, done. And nailed it. Um, she's hot. I, I would have made um, the Adria, 
or Yona. But or Yona is probably how you pronounce it. Yeah, I would but, have made the same co-star as the one from Anyone But You. What's her name? Um, Sydney Swinney. Oh God, Jesus. well this girl, this girl's beautiful. So this good job on better this than Sydney Sweeney. Uh, if you like Latin women, yes. Oh, well, well, this well, girl's well. Latin. Yeah, th this girl. She was in. Um, Go on. She was in like True Detective and. Oh, okay, yeah, I know True Detective. So okay, good. Uh, hey. And she was she was just in she was in something else. Oh, and I just look it up. Pete, Sydney Sweeney. Then. Goodness gracious, that's a. That's a talent right there. Oh, she was a Morbius, uh, Six Underground, um, Andor. She was an Andor. She was the female lead in Andor. Okay. Um, she's done tons of stuff. Uh, she's she's a great actress. Um, but uh, so this is kind of so I didn't know what this movie was about. I figured this was going to be kind of like an action, kind of probably like light comedy. Um, but, but I feel like this is more of a rom a rom com. And I, I like it so far. I've not finished it yet, but I, I did want to review it just because it's literally coming out this weekend. Um, but I highly recommend it. So far, I, I like it. I, it's 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 a different film for Glenn Powell, which I like. Um, it's a different role for him, and it's a it's a unique premise. Uh, basically, he's a teacher, uh, but also like moonlights as like he helps out the police as like a tech guy, but then one of the cops gets suspended and so they set, kind of send him in to do like an undercover thing and then he aces it and then just becomes the guy he replaces the guy but so he, he ends up just kind of like he becomes a hitman a fake hitman yeah uh because he's playing a hitman so he, he basically goes in uh, act, he's the hitman and then he busts you know the guys get bust so he basically say he's saving lives but so he's not actually a hitman himself but he plays a hitman right. Wow. And so it's an interesting premise, and then Adria uh, is one of the characters that is going to hire him, but then she relinquishes, so he doesn't actually bust her, and then they kind of build a relationship, and so that's kind of where I'm at. But uh, I like it so far. Again, it's very uh, interesting. Um, uh, again, I love Glenn Powell, so I think if you like Glenn Powell, I think you'll like this movie. Um, it's a it's a, it's a unique movie, and it's a cool watch. Uh, it's and it's easy to watch. On Netflix, yeah, exactly. This is a good date movie. Uh, this is definitely a movie you can watch with 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 your significant other, and yeah, I, I'd say check it out. I mean, we'll watch it with my significant other uh, tonight, Paul. There you go. Yeah, it's they, a fun film. It's a fun fu fun movie, right? And so before we leave, there's there's two things that I want to say. Two movies I want to talk about. The first one you talked about last week, which was Ezra, right. and I agree with your original review of this 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 is a fantastic movie um i forget the the, the star um the the extended comedian like uh, bobby uh, cannavale he is so good it's, in his, this best, yeah, it's his best role for sure he, he he elevated his game with this role and i thought robert de niro's character like like this is the robert de niro that we love uh to see especially at this age like there's been a lot of like up and down this is his best role since like Meet the Fockers, I think. Where yeah, it's just this, like... is, this is one of his best roles ever. Like I felt and related to everything that came out of his mouth. Um, and 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 this was a fantastic movie. The subject matter, for some reason, the subject matter for people is difficult to deal with, and and it shouldn't be. This is a fantastic story, um, and it's really well done. This is one of my favorite movies of the year. By the way, um, you agree? Not that only the Oscar contender. That was I think it. It should be if there uh, be. the people yeah. behind the Oscars had any sort of real understanding of what's yeah. relevant and what is um, monumental in terms of filmmaking. This is a great film. Um, I also said, I have to say about that. I also said, Pete, this was the best pure drama of the year. Do you yeah, agree with that? there's there are some. There's some comedy in it because he's a stand-up comedian, and then the kid like does jokes. But I never found myself laughing out loud. This is a dramatic, well-told story. It's, yeah. it's fantastic. This is one of, like I said, it's one of the best things I've ever seen. Shout out to our boy Tony Goldman from Ghost. From Ghost, let's go, Ghost. <laughs> All right. And um, then bag the last of Lies. Thing, yeah, the last thing I'm going to say about I, I just watched this movie called Bag of Lies. 
and this is a horror film. It just got released. Um, and this is like a typical horror movie where the ending might let you down. It may not. But this movie uses real people. It doesn't use any makeup or CGI. It's just the way that it's shot. Like, you know, like when you see somebody and they're like, and they're like, they come around a corner and they're all fucked up. You know yeah. what I mean? But they're not, there's nothing on them. It's just like, imagine my face, but I'm in this weird pose. The editing of this movie and, and the way they perform in this movie, I was, I turned this movie off <laughs> after like the first 20 minutes and I didn't watch it until the next day when it was daylight again, because the first 20 to 25 minutes of this movie really disturbed me to the point where I thought I was going to be absolutely ruined for the rest of my life. Bag of lies. It's kind of frightening, um, but it's really well done at the same time. It's a good horror watch. I recommend it. It's better than all of these horror movies that people have been recommending all year, like Tarot and um, some of the other ones. But this one... You said that weird. It's Tarot. Tarot. Sorry, Tarot. <laughs> you made it sound like... I was thinking... Uh, I mean, I'm in Tarot? The, I'm in this French mode, like Tarot. Tarot. It's like... Tarot. Uh, ter tarot. Tarot. Yeah. Tarot yeah. was awful. Bag of Lies, I would have put more money into Bag of Lies and made it uh, the one well, of the best. Atlas, new film starring Jennifer Lopez on Netflix now. Uh, this was one of the top movies uh, that Netflix produced, high budget. Uh, Brad Payton uh, is the director of it. He has done some movies that you would know. Uh, Brad, Brad Payton has also directed uh, Rampage, uh, San Andreas. So he's kind of a bigger blockbuster type guy. Um, this also stars uh, Simu Liu, who was in um, um, Shang-Chi. And also Sterling K. Brown, uh, who I'm a big fan of. You, you just last saw him in American Fiction. But um, this movie got a 5.6 on IMDb, uh, which I would say is probably fairly accurate. I think this is a kind of a, a hit or miss type of film for a lot of people. Um, I thought it was okay. I didn't love it. Uh, I didn't hate it. I don't know if I'll watch it again. Um, so that should tell you enough about it. Um, I think it's a, again, because it's streaming, I think it's a decent streaming and it's a sci-fi, um, you know, I don't know if you remember the old game, there's an old game called like Mech Warrior. So it's very kind of similar to that kind of AI, uh, it's an AI type film where the villain is an AI created being entity. Um, so it's, it's got some decent elements to it um but it's you know I, it's just it's just okay i got I, you know i don't i don't i don't really have much great to say about it I mean, I just, i'm not a hater of it either um i think it's entertaining at parts but it's just i'd say overall it's just not my kind of movie but again i think five six is pretty accurate i'd probably give it a six um but you know, the question is, well, I'll see it again. And I think that will maybe really determine whether or not uh, I, I like it. I guess like I, I like the actors in it. Um, I, I thought overall it was a decent story, um, but nothing to where it's just like, oh, man, this is so great. So take take it or leave it. Or the one, the one we haven't seen that's getting good reviews is In a Violent Nature. I hear that's a slasher's film. Like a, a a slasher lover film, so if you like slasher films, like that's just never great. But we'll we'll tr we'll give it a shot, Paul. I like the title. I'll tell you that much. I love the originality of the t good title, and I think that's a fantastic title. So uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm probably going to check that out. That's going to lead into basically our last tier. Uh, what's next week? So we'll figure out if we'll do the podcast. Obviously, we're kind of ahead. We're behind the head schedule on a few of these, but then ahead, obviously, with Bad Boys and Hitman. Uh, we'll do a full review of Hitman. Uh, on the next one, just to kind of confirm whether or not my things are right. Uh, we also have also the Inside Watchers. Out 2. There's The Watchers, which, which is, is uh, M. Night Shyamalan's daughter's debut, I believe. Is her debut? Yeah. We're going to try and see In a Violent Nature. Maybe we'll get to Garfield. Who knows? Uh, I, there's some other documentaries and stuff out, too. So 
we might cobble together an episode. We'll see, you guys. I'm not going to promise anything. Uh, but if, but again, we're in the heyday of uh, of summer. Inside Out Two is the next major film. So the panel was was phenomenal. I can't wait for the second one. I'm not looking forward to it at all, Pete. I'm not even going to lie or sugarcoat. I my am. Opinions. I like have li- I've liked nothing that Disney has done in, in the watch past. Watch the first one. Watch the first Inside Out. It's really well done. I have to watch it because I have to see the second one. So and you're going to be pleasant in this podcast. It's so good. Uh, I'm not looking forward at all. It literally looks like. Nothing go into it with an open mind. It's of course really I always well do. Done. I always do. I always go into it. I just I'm not looking forward to it. So good. nothing Disney has done on the animated side has impressed me in the last ten years. And it's Pixar, no? Inside of Pixar, Pixar no? Pixar didn't. What has Pixar done since Toy Story seventeen? That's all they got is Toy Story. Up it. Pixar. Pixar crushes every time. Inside That's out. That's not is, true. Is, That's not true. Inside They're, out is one of the best movies. Everyone loves it. I don't even like the uh, the premise. The premise is... T- I, I've seen I the trailer like, three times. It's I cringy. I don't even like your premise. The trailer is cringy when I watch it. Your trailer is cringy. We'll see. Anyways, uh, I'm already about looking forward to the next podcast. You're, you're going to love it. Watch the first one. It's going to be so good. I, I it, It's going to determine whether... Dude, watch, watch it with... Watch it with Nicole, and you guys are going to love it. You're like, oh my god, I love this movie. Yeah, we'll see. It'll break us up. <laughs> like, uh, I, I, the, the, the movie will break us up. It's so bad. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll do another podcast soon. Um, make sure you check out our other podcast, guys. Uh, we just did. Um, uh, yeah, I just lost my thought. Uh, Bridge over the River Kwai. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we just did Bridge on the River Kwai. Check that out again. Paul's old ass movie classics. We're watching old films. Love bridges. Yeah. If, if you're into bridges, this is a great movie. Uh, it's kind of like a book club. We're watching old movies. And we talk about it. That's uh, that's kind of the point. And then it's usually on one, a major streaming service. Check that out. Uh, we also just reviewed Wedding Crashers. Make sure you check that one out. Uh, we've also done uh, Rocky IV. If you haven't seen that one, check out Rocky IV. We, we debate who's the best fighter in the Rocky universe. That's that's a good 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 debate that we had. And uh, yeah, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And with that, Pete, that is a cut. Thanks, guys.